Welcome. Let's look at the systemic circulation versus the pulmonary circulation. Blood circulation generally is the continuous movement of blood through the vessels. For the circulatory system to be established, a number of organs are involved, and these include the lungs. In the lungs, we have oxygen, and of course, blood will be trapping oxygen from this organ. We also have the heart, which is responsible for pumping the blood into the vessels. Then we have the vessels itself through which blood is emptied into. And of course, it is through these vessels that the blood will continuously move to supply different cells of the body with oxygen and nutrients. Then finally, we have the blood itself, which is the medium that is transported through the circulatory system. Let's go further to see where each of these organs are placed and the role that they play in the circulatory system. In establishing the divisions, of the circulatory system, we say that the circulatory system can be divided into the pulmonary circulation and also the systemic circulation. The pulmonary circulation is the circulation that occur between the heart and the lungs, and we we'll see the establishment of this circulatory pathway. So this is the heart, and the heart, of course, we say is responsible for pumping blood into the vessels so that the blood can reach the other regions of the body. It does not only pump out oxygenated blood, it also pumps deoxygenated blood to the lungs where it will be oxygenated. So the heart has like a two role in one, pumping oxygenated blood out of it and also pumping deoxygenated blood out of it. The deoxygenated blood that it pumps out is to be transported to the lungs where it will be oxygenated. While the oxygenated blood that it pumps out is the functional blood that is ready to be used up by the body cell. So let's see how this is established within the circulatory system. We already said that this is the heart, and of course the heart is divided into two compartments. We have the right compartment and we have the left compartment. On the right side of the heart, we have deoxygenated blood, and that is why this is highlighted in blue. And on the left side, we have oxygenated blood, which is ready to be transported to feed the body cells with oxygen and nutrients. That is why this is highlighted in red. So the deoxygenated blood that is seen on the right side will be taken to the lungs where it will be oxygenated. And this is the right lung. And of course we have the left lung on the other side. Since we have deoxygenated blood on the right side, we already said that the heart also pumps out deoxygenated blood to the lungs where it will be oxygenated. So this blood will be pumped out of the heart to the lungs where it will be oxygenated. And the established circulatory pathway between the heart and the lungs during this process is called the pulmonary circulation. So let's drive in to see how this is further established. We know that on the right side, we have deoxygenated blood. So deoxygenated blood from the right atrium will be released down into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, this will be picked up by the pulmonary artery. And remember that it's been established that all arteries carry oxygenated blood except the pulmonary artery. And this is where it is established. The pulmonary artery will carry deoxygenated blood from the right side of the heart to the lungs where it will be oxygenated. We already said that this is the lungs on both sides. So it's going to transport it and it will deliver it to the lungs where there will be uptake of oxygen. And that is what is seen around this region. After the blood is being oxygenated, it will be taken up by the pulmonary vein. We already also know that all veins carry deoxygenated blood except the pulmonary vein that carries oxygenated blood. And this is where that is also established. So we have now oxygenated blood that is coming from the lungs and will be carried by the pulmonary vein. And this vein, we then deliver it back to the left side of the heart where we have oxygenated blood. You can see how interesting this is. So the pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood while the pulmonary vein carries oxygenated blood. From the name plumo, it means the lungs. And from the left region where we now have oxygenated blood, this will then be taken up by the iota, which is the largest artery in the body. The iota carries oxygenated blood and it delivers it to the different regions of the body. So it delivers it to the upper part of the body and of course the lower part of the body. And the process or the circulatory pathway in delivering oxygenated blood through the iota to the different cells of the body is called the systemic circulation. So that is how we have the establishment of the system. 
systemic circulation because it's going to supply the different systems of the body. And that is where the name is being drafted from. So we can see now that pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation, they work hand in hand. For the pulmonary circulation is between the heart and the lungs and the aim of this circulatory pathway is for blood to be oxygenated. After being oxygenated, the blood that is now oxygenated will still be delivered back to the heart because the heart is the pumping medium. It is only the heart that has the sole responsibility of pumping the blood. So it needs to take it back to the heart and it takes it through the pulmonary vein. And of course it is releasing to the left side of the heart because we know that on the left side of the heart is where we have oxygenated blood. So from the left side, the iota takes it and then delivers functional or oxygenated blood to the different systems of the body. And that is why we have the systemic circulation. So going further from the systemic, the cells will take up the oxygen and nutrient. They will use it up. And of course, the blood will then be left deoxygenated. This will be carried by the different veins in the body. And of course, they will now be collected through. From the upper part, they will be released into the superior vena cava. And this is the superior vena cava. Collecting venous blood from the upper part of the body. Then we have the inferior vena cava that is collecting venous blood from the lower part of the body. The superior and inferior vena cava will unite to form the vena cava just at the region near the right atrium. So this is the upper part and this is the lower part. This is the atrium and this is the ventricle. From the right atrium, it will push the blood down into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, because it is deoxygenated blood, and of course it needs to be oxygenated first before going to feed the body cell. So the first region where it will go to is in the lungs where we have oxygen. So, and that will be taken up by no other artery but the pulmonary artery because it's going to the lungs, it's plumo. And of course, we know pulmonary artery only carries deoxygenated blood. So it carries it and it delivers it to the lungs where it will be oxygenated. After being oxygenated, the blood will be collected and be delivered back into the heart through the pulmonary vein. We know pulmonary vein also carries oxygenated blood. And this oxygenated blood will be delivered to the left side of the heart then taken up finally by the hiatus to feed the body cells with oxygen and nutrients. So that's the way the pattern goes on and on and it's continuous, it's like a continuous process. So as to continuously, of course, feed the body cells with oxygen and nutrients. So that is how the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation come together to work as one. So thanks for watching this video. Let's meet again.